KP classes dedicated to excellence. Hello everyone, this is Arit Chandar. In gate architecture and planning, within last five years, we could successfully secure All India Rank 1 for three times. And many students reach out to me asking how to score uh, the first rank in gate architecture, how to top this examination. And in this video, that is exactly what we are going to discuss about. We will discuss about some pointers which can be useful for those who are preparing for gate examination and most importantly for those who are aspiring to top this exam and score the first rank. Based on my personal experience of getting the first rank in the gate examination and also helping students uh, score not only first but also multiple students scoring single digit rank in the past years based on the inputs from their experiences i've compiled few points for you today which i'm going to discuss with you first and most important is to understand that the first rank in gate examination is not something which one can be sure about even in my personal experience i was not sure of getting the first rank till the point of time i saw my result and that's the same for every other student who has topped the examination uh, the main reason for this is gate is highly competitive and there is always a chance that there is some other student who has the same level of dedicated preparation like you and has scored better than you, it is possible that the examination has a higher number of questions from the area which that student has studied. So there's always that probability and it is always possible that someone with a level of preparation slightly lower than you is also getting a higher score than you. That's also a possibility because of the level of competitiveness you have in this examination. Uh, that cleared, there are many instances where the second ranker has scored just a fraction of a mark less than the first ranker. That's also possible. Like if I give you an example from 2024 gate examination, Ishita Agarwal was our student from the online classes, the full length Co uh, coaching program she was a part of it and she scored the second rank in gate 2024 and her score her marks out of 100 were just 1.3 marks less than the first ranker so she lost that opportunity of the uh, gate AIR one with just 1.3 marks so that's also possible so given uh, the level of competitiveness and the level of uh, the number of students who are attempting this examination uh, scoring gate AIR one is something which you can aspire for but no one can be sure of exactly scoring that top rank till the point they see the result. And moreover, uh, getting first rank doesn't hugely increase your opportunity in terms of courses and colleges also. So from my personal uh, understanding, anyone with a single digit rank I feel is equally uh, capable or is competent enough to get into the best possible courses, most competitive courses. So someone with the second, third or fourth rank doesn't lose out on a major opportunity uh, compared to the first ranker in terms of course in colleges obviously you can aspire like i said to have the for top rank but in terms of opportunities you're not missing out something if you're losing one or two ranks so everyone within that stretch of single digit rank is uh, equally uh, has a level of opportunity in terms of selecting competitive courses and, and uh, uh, colleges now uh, uh, so what should your personal target be then so you like i said can aspire for the first rank but your target rather than having a focus on competitive or comparative rank your focus should be on the marks you should give your best your personal best and try to score your personal uh, uh, you, you need to break that barrier of your personal best and try to score as huge as possible or as higher as possible in terms of marks to help you set a target for in this context i can tell you about the past uh, marks scored by the toppers so generally if you look into the last five years generally the score around a uh, so there are instances of 80 to 83 marks also scoring the first rank but a score of 75 also has a fair enough probability of getting the first rank so you can set a target of around 75 marks out of 100 which uh, and try to give your personal best which i'm sure will boost up your probability of scoring the first rank in the gate examination so um, in nutshell instead of focusing just on the first rank you should focus on maximizing your capability of getting good marks in the examination and give your best in the exam to score as high as possible with a target of around 75 out of 100. Now coming to the approach, what should your preparation uh, strategy be or how should you approach the gate preparation uh, uh, for getting the top rank? First and foremost is to understand what to study. 
and I feel something which is even more important is to understand what not to study as well. Gate, gate exam syllabus is so vast. It includes everything about everything included in the BR and B plan curriculum of the complete four or five year program. Uh, uh, the complete bachelor's curriculum is included in the gate examination uh, with a huge number of topics and every topic in itself is a vast area. If I just give you an example, uh, for instance, history of architecture, that is one of the subjects in the overall syllabus of the gate examination, which is included in section B1.1, uh, uh, which, uh, which includes understanding historic structures and the architectural styles, basically. So if you start studying this subject, if you think that you have to give your best and uh, have to study 100% of this particular subject, you can uh, take up any standard textbook of this particular topic. Let us say, for instance, you're looking into uh, the history of architecture book by Sir Benister Fletcher. It is a book of almost 800 pages. Now, uh, you can go to that level of detail for sure to understand the topic. But do you think that is what it takes for gate examination? Do you think that should be the approach for the gate examination? I would say it is not. It is not. Uh, in terms of is it useful or not, even more important is, is it possible to do it? Can you do that level of in-depth study for every subject? So history is just one subject. There are 20, 25 other subjects other than that. Can you study every subject to that level of detail within the span of eight to nine months of preparation, which you are dedicating for the gate examination? Uh, that is number one you need to think about. Secondly, Secondly, you need to think also about uh, even if you are studying, can you retain that huge amount of information for the examination? Many, many a time students tend to read a lot of unnecessary or extra concepts and that adds to uh, that adds to the stress before the examination and feels make you overwhelmed before the examination. So uh, instead of those 800 pages of history of architecture, for instance, if I give you the example of our book of history of architecture, which is included in the study material, this is just 200 pages. Someone who has uh, uh, with the same level of dedication covered these 200 pages compared to those 800 pages, I'm, I'm sure both will have a fair chance. I'm not saying that someone who studies this these 200 pages will know more about history of architecture, but I would say that there are almost a fair chance of scoring same in the gate examination ultimately that level so your focus should not be on studying everything to utmost detail rather it your your preparation should be a smart one where you know what to study and what not to study you need to draw your boundaries for every subject and accordingly focus and your preparation should be oriented towards the gate examination that's most important Coming to the second point, other than studying and uh, re learning concepts in a gate-oriented manner, it is also important for you to maintain a proper notes. Uh, I would strongly recommend you on the same YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of interviews and uh, testimonials by, by our past toppers, including the first tankers. And I'm sure that every interview you will come across this particular point of the importance of making notes. All what you study, when you study, you might understand. But how can you remember that and how can you capitalize on it during the examination only with revision and proper revision is only possible when you make a proper running notes whenever you're learning something when you're attending a lecture you need to make a proper running notes of that particular concept and later on during the last two to three months where you start your revision revise from your notes and then make a short notes out of it so uh, let us say for a subject you are having a notes of 30 to 40 pages that when you revise, you need to make a short notes, probably uh, skim those 30 to 40 pages down to 10 pages or so 5 to 10 pages or so. And that later on for your end moment of preparation, we strongly recommend students like in our coaching, we follow a 24 subject pattern where we have 24 separate subjects which will cover the entire syllabus of gate examination. We strongly encourage students during their end moment of preparation to come up with 24 A4 sheets one A4 sheet for one subject where they write down all the important formulae, definitions and terms related to that subject in that A4 sheet. Now, in a, in a particular sheet, if you're writing one particular formula or one term, that doesn't mean you're just going to remember that. When you revise in the last moment, when you look at that particular formula, it will create those backlinks and you will understand, okay, this formula, what are the terms in it? What is What are the definitions of each of those terms? And what's the measurement unit for every term used in that formula? So that backlink is created. Now that backlink cannot be created by directly looking at your info sheet. It is a methodological, it is a systematic approach where you start from running notes then skim it down to a shorter notes then finally come up coming up with these revising sheets of paper so this approach is something which you need to have you need that level of dedication at every level of your preparation including uh, revision and also practice moving on finally the importance of practicing 
not just learning the concepts and remembering it is important that you put those put your knowledge to test so practice questions from past gate papers and also practice tests we offer a unmatched test series of three to four thousand questions where you need to it is not just solving and understanding how much you're scoring in a particular test it, like for instance you're writing a test and you're scoring 10 out of 20 so that score of 10 out of 20 has no significance in the gate examination what is important is where you're losing the remaining 10 marks what you're losing that is more important so 10 out of 20 scoring is 10 out of 20 losing so what where are you losing what are those weak areas what require improvement identifying those and uh, uh, accordingly planning your remaining time of preparation that is what a topper does and that is something which has been proven to be successful for our past students as well and we at kp classes also try that student community has access to as many sources as possible in the course of their preparation you can download our mobile app kp exam uh, kp gate classes that's the name of our app so the link for our app is available in the description of this video as well and when you go to the courses there is a free resources course over there where we have compiled all the free resources which are essential for your gate preparation all the standard documents including standards like uh, say IS codes or relevant URDPFI guidelines or the relevant uh, barrier free guidelines by CPW you will find all these require, required uh, PDFs uploaded in that particular course you can use that as a prerequisite for your preparation for the gate examination and I'm sure uh, you will come out with wonderful results I hope this video was helpful for you all the best for your preparation